I can sew a welt pocket, but details are, are not so good. On these pants, the corners are quite rounded out. Gaps here are two completely different sizes. This one's angled. Oh boy, uh, bubbling. I'm gonna practice sewing welt pockets today. I think my first problem is that I've been combining too many steps into one. So let me walk through what I think my process should be. I'm beginning by simply connecting the welt onto what is the pocket piece. I've pinned on that little piece of fabric that will end up behind the welt so that the pocket fabric doesn't show through. Run this stitch. I'm going over those exact same lines, but attaching this onto the fabric that is technically the, uh, the pant. Trim a line down the middle. Okay, yeah, there we go. Flip it through to the other side. And then finally, I do the zigzag stitch on the corners. Well, I mean, it's a little better. It's a more even shape. It's square, but those are some messy looking zigzags and there and yeah. Uh, let me make a few more. Hit that working montage editing corn. So I made another three and um, no improvements yet. There's no shame in asking for a bit of help. YouTube, here I come. Look at that, the edges, they're so nice and square. Oh, this new technique, I'm telling you, it's mwah. I'm gonna make a few more and uh, I'll get into the details, okay? Look at that. In fact, the last three that I have done, I think have turned out quite nice. I mean, look how nicely squared up the edges are. Okay, some of the lines here are a little wobbly, but compared to where I started, mwah. Essentially the difference between this old and new technique is that there's so much fabric that was folding and bunching here. It's like driving on a gravel road, whereas here everything laid nice and flat, like a, like a nice cement road on a, a freeway, you know? And oof, giant thank you to my friend Diane for teaching me this wonderful new method. So I ended up doing another two just to make it a total of 10 welt pockets. And with these last ones, I even put the whole pocket bits on. These first four were with the old technique and oh boy, are they rough. I mean, between the zigzags on the sides, the lines are a little wonky and then just these gaps here are so uneven the edges are curled number five was with the new technique and i did get these edges really nice and square but i did go too far out with the zigzag stitches and same with these diagonal lines number six here turned out pretty good i mean those are pretty even looking zigzags the gap is nice and small and even little wobbly on this but pretty decent. definitely goofed with number seven I mean, I cut the fabric too much so it's sticking out and the gap was a little large. Zigzags aren't looking even again. The lines are wobbly. Number eight, eh, okay. A little bit big on the gap there. Number nine and 10 are decent. 
Uh, the gaps are nice, but then, oh, look at that line that I stitched there. Ay, ay, ay. And this one, it just bows down a little bit. But I did go make the effort of putting it into a full pocket, so that's nice with these two. Especially with this video slash project, but in general, there's, there's two things going on. Um, I'm constantly striving to improve, to get better, and as a result, I'm quite critical of my work. But then I also have to remind myself to step back and appreciate my progress so far and maybe it's not a wobbly line, maybe it's character. You know? <sighs> sure is nice to be back on a regular schedule, huh? <laughs> yeah, sure. Huh? I promise we'll continue to post almost every week and um, well, look, I think we're getting better at making videos, you know, our sewing skills are improving and look, we'll be just as diligent, but perhaps we now focus more on our storytelling, you know? And, well, if life has taught me anything, um, change is inevitable and if we embrace it, well, who knows what wonderful things await us, you know? Do these missing blankets have anything to do with this?